Uh, early pollen is Rex's birthday, so we'll want to talk to him and give him a gift. I can't tell if it is hubris to believe humanity will become the dominant species on Bertumna as we were on Earth. Hang muses, watching a Dorb's moth flutter by. If nothing else, it is certainly a survivorship bias. The family tree of humanity spe of humanoid species has many dead branches, so to speak. Humans are weak, defenseless, fragile, inefficient, and short-lived, Hang says, and that is only a few of our many faults, and yet we dominated Earth. I have to believe that it is possible to do the same here. That's true. Humanity doesn't have any natural claws, teeth, defenses, anything. We're just smart. <laughs> That's all we've got for us. And opposable thumbs. Uh, do you ever think about Tammy? Cal says, as you both lean back against the fence and watch the shadows creep across the garden path. He takes a long pull of his canteen and sighs. I don't know. I don't want to be a downer, man, but it's so sad, you know? It's been, what, seven years? He scrubs his hand through his hair. We're all totally different people than we used to be. I wonder what kind of person she would have grown up to be. It's a good question. Maybe if we run through another life, we can find out. Food! Cal grabs the fruit out of your hands, then remembers his manners. He gives you a big hug. Thanks, Selene. I'm starving. How did you know? It's hot and humid inside the Geoponics Bay, making your clothes stick to your skin as you look around for Cal. Eventually, you see him, his back turned to you as he lifts bags of fertilizer into a wheelbarrow. You call out to him as you approach, and he turns to you with a beaming smile. Selene, he greets you. I was one. I was hoping I would see you today. Uh, pseudonym says that humans also have unique shoulders for accurate throwing and persistence hunting. That's true. As you open your mouth to respond, you hear a quiet crack and a hiss from nearby. Oh, dude, watch out, Cal says, stepping between you and what you realize too late is a humidity sprinkler. Cal laughs as he's blasted by a cloud of mist. For one perfect moment, it, he looks as if he's been outlined with a thousand rainbows. Ah, dip. Cal whines, smiling as he shakes out his hair and flips it back over his shoulder. I should have let you take that one, but your clothes would have gotten wet. He stands up straighter as your gaze passes over his body. He's, well... He's really grown into himself, is the thing. Before your eyes, a droplet of water bravely winds its way from the rise of his chest down the rippling muscles of, of his abdomen to where it disappears into the shirt tied around his waist. Cal tilts his head, his smile turning uh, turning a little teasing. He flexes his biceps at you. Got you looking. Of course I am. Have you seen yourself? Dude, you're blinding me. Put a shirt on or take your own shirt off too. Of course I am. Have you seen yourself? We are flirting with Cal. Cal's face goes completely red as he laughs and drops the pose. Ah, geez, Selene, he says, ducking his head. You can just barely see the edge of his smile. You can't just say things like that. He scuffs the dirt, rubbing the back of his neck bashfully. I, um... He starts, then laughs again. His smile turns soft. I like your hair. It's really... pretty. You really caught him off guard, but he doesn't seem to mind. Cal leans in. Can I tell you a secret? He says. I'm not actually too hot in here. My enhancement means I'm always the right temperature. I don't even sweat. I just like taking my shirt off. Like, beating the crap out of each other and playing soldier isn't the only way to get a rock and bod, you know? Oh, you know. You know really well. You spend an enjoyable afternoon helping Cal deliver bags of fertilizer to every corner of the hydroponics bay. When the job's done, he claps you on the back. Oof. He's as strong as he looks. Cal chatters at you about his plans for the rest of the week. As you leave the hydroponics lab... The relatively cooler, drier air of Rotumna hits you like a slap. But of course, Cal doesn't look bothered at all. Race you to the cafeteria, he teases you, before taking off down the path. You yell and run after him, causing a ruckus that makes a few adults shake their heads fondly at you as you tear through the colony side by side. That was a fun event. Oh, and Nomi wants to talk. Neat. You spot Nomi crossing the courtyard from the depot to, their, to the living quarters, lugging an armful of cans of paint. Hey, Selene, they exclaim, barely keeping one of the cans from falling out of their arms. Hey, can you give me a hand with this? You take a few of the cans and Nomi sighs in relief. Phew, thank you. This is my third trip. I think I finally got all the colors I need. It's going to be amazing. At your questioning, look, Nomi giggles and starts skipping, walking towards the living quarters. Come on, I'll show you. You follow Nomi to the suite of rooms that they share with their mom and dad. Nomi leads you past the jumble of bed bedroom furniture and into their empty room. 
light pours in from a skylight, and Omi stands under it and stretches their arms wide, doing a little spin. I'm painting a mural. My mind is going light speed with possibilities, Nomi declares, tugging at their hair. I'm drunk with power. I could do anything. Slain, you have to help me decide. Nomi grabs their sketchbook and shows you a few concept drawings. Space theme, jungle theme, the inside of a pirate ship, abstract art. All the major players are here. Nomi's been busy. They look at you in agony of indecision. These all look great. You should go with the space theme, jungle theme, abstract, or pirate. One other different thing on each wall. I'll try the these all look great, being the indecisive person that I naturally am. Do you think so? Nomi replies. I did really work hard on them, but now I have to pick. It's the worst. How can I pick just one? Um, space theme, jungle theme. I think they'd like the pirate ship. Like, space is too normal. Like, for me, space would be cool because space is so impossible. But they lived on a spaceship for most of their lives. So yeah, we'll go with a pirate ship. I know, Nomi exclaims. It'd be like living in a hollow game, like a role-playing thing. They prop their foot on up on a can and strike a dashing pose. Nomination, ruler of the high seas, scourge of the seven winds, plunder of booty. Nomi pauses and makes a face. Um, maybe strike that last part. Oh, do I have to go through all of them? It's probably going to be the one on each wall. All right, we'll go with the space theme then. Nomi wrinkles her nose. That's what I thought too, but then I thought, what if it's a little too on the nose, you know, with growing up in space and all? It feels a little basic. What about the jungle theme? Yeah, I think so too, Nomi says. But is it a little weird to have like a green tropical jungle here on Vertumna? I mean, I've never even seen a green tree. So should I make it a Vertumnan jungle instead? Oh, I don't know. Now I just added another choice. Loving the vibe of the abstract one. It's so clean and modern, right? Nomi replies, looking this, uh, holding the sketchbook one way, then the other. Like a hollow vid about what the future was supposed to look like. All bright colors and bold geometric shapes. I kind of like it, but what does it really mean, you know? In this... Is this a place I'm going to feel comfortable living in when the real future is so lush and wild? Want a different thing on each wall? Nomi stares at you. What? Oh, stars, Selene. That's perfect. Why didn't I think of that? They start ripping pages out of the sketchbook and laying them against the walls. This one here? No. Here. The colors will play off each other. Oh, and oh no. This wall will get gets more light for most of the year, so... After a few minutes of frenzied planning, Nomi grabs you by the shoulders. This is going to be amazing, they exclaim. Thank you, you're a genius. They regard their walls with barely restrained excitement. What do you say, Selene? Do you want to help make this vision become reality? Uh, we have Creativity 41, so totally, I know what to do. You're something of an artist yourself, after all. You and Nomi get started transferring the, their sketches to the wall. After a few minutes of supervising you, Nomi steps back and lets you use your imagination to figure out the rest. You're really good at this, they declare. Have you ever considered becoming an artist, too? No. Creativity is one of my worst sk skills. <laughs> uh, for most of the day, the room is total chaos. Nomi assures you repeatedly that this is part of the experience. As the second sun is beginning to set, you step back and take a look at what you've accomplished. It's really nice. Only you and Nomi could have made such a discordant composition come into harmony, and the result is a bedroom that's not only unique and inspiring, but bursting with the love that you and Nomi share for both each other and your art. Nomi starts hammering the lids back in on the paint cans while you collect the brushes for washing. Thank you for your help, they say. I definitely couldn't have finished this without you. Nomi's stomach rumbles and their eyes go wide. I'm starving, they exclaim. Did we work through dinner? You don't need to check the time on your holopalm to know that Nomi is right. Your stomach grumbles in solidarity. And Nomi laughs. Okay, let's grab some grub, chum. Alright, can we give you a gift? Nomi's painting their nails. Uh, every every nail a different bright color. They hold them up to you proudly. Marsvan let me borrow some of her nail polish, they say. She's so glamorous, and she said that if I liked any of the colors, I could just have them because she has so many. I have a present for you. We've got 18 crystal clusters. That is a crazy number. All right. Let's go down here and talk to Nem. 
Uh, late night, early morning? Yep. Have an egg. You're a hero, Nem says, taking the egg. I was starving. Yep. Ooh, and you want to say something else. You're catching up a Nem between her, her drills when she looks over your shoulder and frowns. Newton's bloody apple, she curses, seeming to shrink behind you. She's here again. You turn, and at the other end of the garrison, you can see a small crowd of young soldiers forming around Chief Steward Antecedent. She's handing out lunch tiffins and doling out hugs to anyone who comes within melee range, which is quite a few of them. You know it's just from hanging around the garrison, even some of the transplanted Helio soldiers have started calling her auntie. This must be why. She comes by every couple of days, Nem grumbles, like we're still, little, still kids in the creche playing in her skirts. It's so disruptive. Eventually, the crowd around Antecedent thins and she makes it over to you and Nem. She greets you with a warm hug. She smells nice, like flour and yeast. Hello, Selene, she says. Have you eaten? I'm fine, Auntie. Not yet, Auntie. Or I don't need your help. Apparently, that's what Nem wants, but I'm not a monster, so... <laughs> uh, not yet, Auntie. She smiles fondly and hands you a tip and still warm. It's important to keep your strength up, my love, she says and pats you on the cheek. Antecedent turns to Nem, and you can almost feel the temperature in the room drop several degrees as no Nem stonily stares down her mother. Antecedent's smile grows thin, and she clutches the handles of her basket. How about you, Annie? Have you eaten? Do you need? Nem scowls and crosses her arms. I'm fine, she says, cutting off her mother, just like I was yesterday and last week. I don't need you to manage me. Wow. If you're sure, Antecedent responds hesitantly. It's a mother's job to worry, Annie. She reaches out to lay her hand on Nem's scaly cheek, but Nem jerks backwards and slaps her hand away. Oh yeah? Nem retorts. You just sit around and worry. Must be nice. I bet you'd like it if that was all I did too, huh? If I quit being a soldier and spent all day cuddling babies and, and wiping noses and fixing clothes like you do? Like you did? Nice and safe in the creche forever? Nem, but she's your mom or you don't belong here, Antecedent. No. Nah. Like, we're in this awful confrontation, but it's like, you've got a mom who's trying to be nice, and yeah, it's going to be awkward because she's coming to a military barracks embarrassing her daughter, and I get that, but dude, Nem is being brutal. Uh, Nem, she's your mom. Nem turns her frightening scowl on you. Stay out of this, Selene. I've never thought that, Annie, she says, laying her hand on her heart. I worry because I love you, and I'll, I always will. I'm just doing what I can to keep you safe. Love doesn't keep anyone safe, Nim exclaims, raising her voice enough that some of the soldiers turn their heads to watch. Her thunderous expression convinces most of them to get back to their business. Nim clenches her fists. Love didn't keep the calm safe, did it? She says, her voice breaking. There's no amount of love or worry on this whole stupid planet that can do that. So you, you should just stop, okay? Stop or, or do something actually useful. I'm never going to be like you. I'm going to fight. Oh no. <laughs> Vase peels off from his unit and jogs over to stand beside Nem. You okay, babe? He asks, putting his hands on Anemone's shoulder. She covers it with her own and angles her body towards him. Yeah, everything's just galactic, Nem mutters. My mom was just about to tell me again how much she wishes I would give up being a soldier so I can pop out babies and be safe. Antecedent sputters, trying to explain herself, but Vase beats her to it. Anemone, Anemone is an exemplary soldier, Chief Steward. He says calmly, I know it's hard for a mother to accept, but we're all much safer for her service to the colony. He puts one finger under Nem's chin, talking directly to her. And remember, Nemi, that we exist to protect people like your mother, to preserve the bond between parent and their children. Vase gives Antecedent a stiff smile. If the stars align, one day we won't lose any more sons. A soft O oh escapes Antecedent as she blots her eyes. Oh, you are one of the good ones, aren't you? She says, clearly trying not to cry. Just walking in the footsteps of good men and women who served before me, ma'am, Vase replies. We couldn't do it without you keeping the hearth lit for us. Speaking of, I'll take lunch if you have any left. Antecedent laughs and hands him a tiffin from her basket, then goes up on her toes and gives him a quick hug. Over her shoulder, Vase shoots a cheeky wink at Nem, who rolls her eyes and snorts. That's probably the nicest Vase has ever been. <laughs> like being reasonably nice and trying to de-escalate the situation. Uh, yeah, don't care about anything you have to say, but here's a strange device. 
Know thy enemy, he says in a growl. Did we give Nem? Yes, we did. Okay. All right, Vase, what do you got to say? Vase is in the garrison lounge, taking a taking up a whole table with his schoolwork. The way he acts like he's emerged from the womb, armed to the teeth. It's a little jarring to see him doing something as pedestrian as homework. He sees you and waves you over. Oh, Selene, you care about all this Xeno stuff, he says. Can you help me with this? Uh, of course, Vase. I can give it a shot or do your own homework. Sure, I've got Biology 51, so yeah. Vase flips the screen of his hollow palm to face you, and you look over his homework. Oh, yes, the questions are a little advanced, but you've learned so much through independent study that it's no trouble. You go over the first few questions with him. Vase listens attentively, nodding and asking intelligent questions. When he flips back to his worksheet, though, you can see he's already finished most of his homework perfectly. Wait, was he testing you? Apparently, Vase knows a lot more about xenobiology than he's letting on. He snickers at your shocked expression. What, you think I'm an idiot who knows, uh, who only knows how to hit things? He says, teasing. Not knowing anything about the enemy is the best way to get yourself killed out here. He leans in, a consp conspiratorial smile on his face. I just wanted to see if you would help. Oh, baby, I love me a big dumb man. <laughs> uh, you don't have to lie to get my attention, or are you flirting with me? Gross. Um... Uh, I don't want to insult him because we're trying, trying to become his friend for whatever reason. Definitely not flirting. So we'll go the middle option, even though it does sort of annoy me as well. You don't have to lie to get my attention. Oh yeah? Vay says it worked though. You know, Vay says, I actually thought the xenobiology stuff was going to be hard. First thing I did when I found out I had to take a xeno take Xeno B, was go to that hippie Cal to see if we could work out a deal. You know, he does my homework, I get the guys to lay off bugging him about how he's a prissy little guy, that kind of thing. They scoffs. Got a hand it to the guy. He can get loud when he's angry. He said we're a bunch of violent, thoughtless thugs, and he hates us and everything we stand for. Can you believe it? He wouldn't be able to waste his time buggering float cows or whatever he gets up to in geoponics if it weren't for soldiers protecting his stupid butt. He can be the king of Knoll Hill if he wants to be, Vase concludes, shrugging. I don't need anyone's help. Yeah. They're both very much on opposite sides of the... Uh, like... The viewpoint here at the colony. Whether to fight and kill or... Get along with the local environment. Well, hey, Rex exclaims, jumping up when he sees you. How's it hanging, Selene? Oh, it's still the same hickeys one. It's your birthday. Have a log. Woohoo! Rex howls with happiness as he takes the mushwood from you. You remember my birthday. Anne brought me the perfect stick for my collection. Ooh, and he has an event as well. You're walking through the courtyard looking for Rex when something moves quickly at the corner of your vision. Duck or don't duck? We will duck whatever our perception has allowed us to see. You skillfully dodge the frisbee that had been heading straight for your head. The disc clatters harmlessly to the ground a few meters from you. Rex jogs over and picks up the frisbee. Hey, Selene, he hails you. Sorry about that. I'm playing catch with Nougat, and, well... Uh, he elbows you in the side, grinning. She's got a heck of an arm on her. Guess she used to be big in a sports ball. Good thing I'm so high energy, right? Man, getting hit in the head by a frisbee is awful. <laughs> Uh, when I'm not working with the construction crew, I've been helping take care of the kids. Rex continues, spinning the frisbee on his fingertip. Nugget said she misses the crash. You know, the heliopause doesn't have one. Instead of all the playing together all the time, we stayed in our own discreet family units when we were kids. I'm an only child, so I would have loved your crash. Hey, you hear Nugget yelling. Throw the frisbee, she pouts as she runs up to Rex. Stop talking to your boyfriend. Boyfriend, Rex exclaims and mocks a friend. What I do with Selene is none of your business, Squirt. Rex grabs Nougat around the middle and zooms her around like a spaceship. Nougat screams in delight, kicking and flailing until Rex sets her back down on her feet. It's your turn to run, Rex instructs. Go on, get. Nougat takes off, yelling at the top of her little lungs. Man, kids, am I right? Rex says, standing with his arms akimbo. They're great, though. 
I'm glad there are so many of them here. There's always someone to play with. How about you, Rex says. Do you want a kid someday? I'm not sure yet. I want a whole passel of kids someday. Maybe one or two. Uh, no, I hate kids. Or I'll make a better uncle. <laughs> this is about Tulane, not me personally. Uh, <laughs> Tulane probably would want one or two. They seem to be a fairly reasonable, loyal colonist kid. So yeah, maybe one or two. But they certainly haven't been all over the options of hanging out at the crèche, helping out the kids. Well, we have done tutoring and stuff occasionally. Oh, that's great, Rex exclaims. I love that for you. I hope you find someone who wants that too. How about you? Oh yeah, obviously yes, Rex answers immediately. I want like a, b a billion kids. Every kid in the colony can be my kid, absolutely. I don't even have to be their dad, dad, you know? Who cares about genetics or whatever? I just... He looks over to Nougat, who's waving her arms, agitatedly waiting for Rex to throw the frisbee. Rex does, and boy, does it go far. Nougat takes off running again as it soars over his over her head. I just want there to be kids everywhere, Rex finishes his thoughts. Lots of kids around means that the community is healthy and everyone is at peace, and people are optimistic about the future. Plus, kids are just so great, Rex adds. I love making silly faces at babies and crawling around on all fours with toddlers and wrestling with the bigger kids and helping them with their school and stuff. It's fun. Rex scratches the back of his head. On the Helio, we were kind of expected to stop playing so much when we started the education program, he says. And any playing we did was supposed to be like sports and endurance and real future soldier stuff. Sometimes I wish I could get a do-over on it, Rex says. Like, if I could go back to before everyone cared about their big guns, he makes... I'm just going to skip that. Kids don't care about that kind of stuff, he continues. They're just innocent, pure of heart, you know? They don't have all of these, he gestures roundly to his own head, thoughts, I guess. It's at this moment that the frisbee reasserts itself as an equal participant in the conversation. Rex's attention goes to it immediately, his ears perking up as he leaps up and catches it before it can menace you again. Ha! Ah. He laughs, his thoughts, his thoughtful mood broken. That was close. I'm going to go back to playing with Nougat before she hurts someone. Nice talking to you, Selene. All right. Um, yes, we've read that. Now, hugs incoming. Got to go through all of the options. <laughs> Mars is fanning herself with a well-manicured hand. Ugh, she says, can we turn down the heat on this whole stupid planet? It's either hot and dry or cool and muggy. I'm tired of it. Here's a flower for you. Hmm, a flower? A cheap gift, but I suppose it will look good in my hair. Thank you. Ooh, and we get her next event as well. We've been getting a lot of events lately. You find Mars frowning over a textbook on her hollow. She flips through the pages with growing disgust until finally she gestures angrily to dismiss the screen and then drags her hand down her face. Ugh, she exclaims. People totally suck. You slide into the sea next to Mars and she sighs. I told my dads about my plan to get the adults to adopt kudos as a way to encourage the arts, and they got really weird about it. Like, they think it's a good idea, but then they told me that I should really that I should read about Earth's history. So I did, and you know what I found out? People suck. The whole reason we left Earth was because trading money for stuff was a bad idea. It made a few people rich and everyone else poor, and it destroyed all the culture and people fought and killed each other over it. By the time our parents left Earth, almost everyone worked super hard and was super poor, while like a hundred people barely worked at all and owned private spacecraft. That's so dumb. This colony is the closest humans have come to income equality in thousands of years, but we don't have any passion. The Earth's history is full of people with passion who ended up turning into supervillains while everyone else starves, Mars says, crossing her arms. Is that all we're capable of, really? She looks at you intently and puts her hand over her heart. I'm a passionate person, Selene, she says. Is being a despot all that I'm capable of? There's nothing wrong with passion, or you're going to have to work at it. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with passion. Oh, that lowered her friendship. Mars purses her lips. I agree, but no one can be right 100% of the time. If I really am going to run this place one day, I can't be surrounded by yes-men, she scolds you. I need you to... Have a little backbone, Slane, or I'll end up exactly like an Earth politician. There has to be a middle ground between austerity and inequality. Mars continues, I don't want to have everything while everyone else has nothing. Like, yes, obviously I want to colonize this stupid rock, Mars continues, 
I want massive cities and glass skyscrapers and flying cars. I want to have to not have to fight off aliens every year. I want to pave over all these skunky pollen trees and kill the stupid bugs. I want air conditioning. I want everyone to have everything, even the stuff that the adults think don't matter. Doesn't matter. We can't live like animals just because of the boogeyman of our past. One day, I'm going I'm going to be running this place, Mars says. Just you wait, Selene. I'm not going to let us fall into the same patterns we did on Earth. We have to take care of each other and master this planet. But we also can't forget what makes life worth living. Luxury. What do you think, Selene? Mars asked. Do you think I'm on the right track? Uh, yes, I think so. But she doesn't want a yes man, so probably not that. How do we avoid past mistakes? It's never going to work. I think capitalism is good, actually. How do we avoid past mistakes? Well, I mean, Mars starts, then furrows her brow in thought. I mean, I guess I thought because we're already starting out equal, people would just be better. She frowns. You're right. It seems like wishful thinking, doesn't it? Well, at least I have to bring, have you to bring me back to Earth. I mean, Vertumna. Mars smiles and claps to your shoulder. Thank you, Selene. You always think of things I don't. I really appreciate that about you. All right. Any collectibles out here? No. Nothing else over here. All right. We've read that one a million times. Your mom looks up for a planning. What is it, Selene? Unless you're here to work, I'm busy. And we'll pick up that log. All right. Probably do same thing as last month, and that will probably max off our reasoning as well, which would be cool. Uh, the tutoring children, right? Yeah. Today you're tutoring Nougat and a couple of younger kids in ancient Earth geography. They're learning the names of the countries by pointing to them on maps and saying few facts. A few facts about them. It seems kind of pointless to memorize places that these kids will never see, but it's not like you can teach them much about Vertumnan geography yet. You're still discovering it. Billions of people? Nougat says, skeptically squinting at a hollow projection of Earth. How do they fit everyone into one little planet, with all the trees and animals and stuff? Was it like one big colony? Tell her the sad truth, lie and make it sound idyllic, or dodge the question. Uh, learning about Earth Two is a seven point card telling a gentle tale. This is the better card, and I think it is the better answer. The more truthful answer. You give Nougat the little kid version of the truth that you that you learned as a kid. You tell her life on Earth was brutal and hard. Humanity destroyed the environment and fought over what was left. There were no trees or animals left. Not as many as there should have been, anyway. Most people were poor, hungry, and sick, and the ones who weren't kept all the nice things for themselves. At least your parents were lucky to escape on the stratosphere, and you were lucky to be born on it. You're all lucky to be here now, no matter what, at least Vertumna isn't Earth. Nougat looks bewildered. She doesn't really watch Holovids, only the cheerful ones for kids that don't address Earth's decline, so she had no idea. But they still had really, really tall buildings, right? To fit all the people? She asks. You sigh and tell her uh, they did. She nods in satisfaction and goes back to her schoolwork. Yeah, hearing about the destruction of the Earth would be hard to take in. Huh. Oh, yeah, that's a plus three. Wasn't even paying attention to that. Could go with that, then. Yeah. You think that's better? Sure. I would assume that would be even better. Oh, okay, yeah, because then that can be treated as an eight for that whole run. I can see that. All right. 
There we go. Best score. And that did max out our reasoning, so we'll get a new perk. New perk. Plus one to mental increases. Okay. That's not the most useful perk of all time, but it means anytime we're gaining organizing, we'll get an extra one. <laughs> That would have been a nice perk to get years ago. We have read that before. Kyle's hauling a huge bag of fertilizer, the muscles in his arms bulging as he staggers past. Hey, Selene. He grunts, dropping it at his feet. Whew, I'd like to see a soldier do that. I mean, some of them probably can. Soldiers are probably reasonably buff. Uh, we have read that. Nem seems troubled. How do you know if someone still likes you? She asks. I don't understand this dating stuff. Well, since it's giving us options to flirt with Vase, unless those flirting attempts botched Horribly, I assume he is willing to flirt with other people, which is a bad sign. Uh, Nomi is sitting in front of an array of hollow screens, all displaying different tutorials for various crafts and hobbies. I was thinking about learning something new, Nomi says, poking their finger into their cheek. It's not enough that I already know how to draw and write and play video games. I could learn to knit or sculpt or make jewelry. They think about this for a second. I know we can just narrow print stuff like that, but it's kind of, it's nice to make stuff with your hands, right? Yeah. Uh, you spot Rex lying in his makeshift hammock, and he's not alone. He shushes you as you approach, placing a finger to his lips, indicating that the person snuggled up under his arm is fully asleep. Hold on to the hammock, he whispers. I'm going to try to get out. Between the two of you, you manage to get Rex out of the hammock without waking his sleeping friend. Rex looks a little tousled and kiss-bitten, and his eyes are bright with mischief. I tired him right out, he mutters. Uh, he murmurs, pleased with himself. What you need, Selene? Nothing. We've read that one about organizing the arts on Vertumna. Don't think there's going to be any new collectibles. There are not. And still no discs. You catch your dad taking a, a break in the shade of the geoponics domes. Oh, hey, he says, waving lazily. Taking breaks is important. Don't forget to take care of yourself, okay? Are you eating enough, your mom says, looking at you critically, drinking enough water? It's hotter here than you're used to. You have to take care of your body if you want to take care of you. All right. We don't really need to do anything else in engineering. Actually, when we were looking at jobs to do, I don't think I checked the barracks at all, which I probably should have, just to see if there's anything. Sports ball is bravery and toughness, both which would be good to get. Defense training is combat and animals, both of which would be good. Lookout duty, perception and animals, we don't need perception. Guard duty is combat and bravery, which both would be good to get. It's not really the direction our character is going, but also, it helps build friendship with base, and if that is a goal of ours, wouldn't be bad to do. Let's see. If we look at collectibles. We could still use... I guess roots are only for dis and tang. We don't need to give gifts to Tang anymore. Yeah, I was thinking about exploration to get some more items, but I don't think that's really a priority at the moment. We've got most of what we need for people for the next while. So yeah, maybe we'll do guard duty. Because even though I'm not, I'm not going on the exploration of the swamps to go 
kill all the animals in their homes. We have helped out with guarding ever since we were a child. So continuing to train for that makes sense. You show up for orientation to guard duty. <laughs> As I just said, we've been helping guard the every glow since we were a child, and yet now we're finally getting oriented to be a guard. <laughs> finally making it official. You show up for orientation to guard duty. Vase and Nem are here as well, listening intently to security cheat Ra. As he teaches you the specifics of colony defenses. There's the walls, of course, and the lookout towers and the robotic turrets. There are obviously weaknesses like the gates and the less obvious ones like the pipes that divert runoff water away from the colony. And there are high priority targets like engineering and geoponics. You're surprised to learn that the living quarters are considered lower priority. Duh, Vase mutters. During an attack, everyone's supposed to be defending the colony, not hiding under their beds. It's a lot to learn quickly, and Rhett doesn't let you make mistakes. He drills you and drills you, first on your knowledge of the colony, and then on actual drills, physical fitness and reflexes, loading and firing a plasma rifle, securing a dangerous situation, and combat tactics, both as a group and solo. If the lookouts on the walls see anything, you'll be the ones to shoot it, he says, as you struggle with the reloading of the cartridge in your plasma rifle. There might not be time to wait for backup. You have to be able to make and act on the right choice without hesitation. He looks you right in the eye. You're not only a guard while you're on duty, he says seriously. You are being charged with the defense of the colony itself. I expect you to be ready at all times to answer the call. Frustrated, you fumble the cartridge and it clatters to the ground. Rhett stops, stops it under his foot. No slacking. Keep your mind and body sharp and ready for anything. We are at war, he continues, leaning in close to drive his point home. He's been saying that a lot recently. He really believes everything Lum says about the outside world. Rhett leaves you to figure out how to reload your plasma rifle on your own. Vase is already finished, of course, but Nem stops what she's doing to help you. There's a latch here, she says, flicking it with her thumb. If it's deployed, you can't click the cartridge in. Got it? You nod. It's easy when someone actually shows you how. Uh, she's kind of intense. I'll make Rhett proud someday. It's probably a good answer. Nem laughs and claps you on the back. Yeah, he's just a big teddy bear, right? She finishes her reload and shoulders a rifle, and then she and Vase leave together. But we got our rebellion back down. We had a tiny bit of rebellion. So woo, loyalty to the colony. Alright. Plus one to red cards, plus three bonuses to pairs. Alright. Well, if we want a lot of pairs, we can throw in a bunch of wilds. <laughs> so we'll use the larger wild. And do something like that. Check out all them pairs. <laughs> Alright, fine. Uh... Really, all those blue is better than tossing in a 13. No, no it's not. I was going to say, that's insane. What if I put this in? No, so that three wild is still better. Okay. Well, I'll take the win. Not the best. We could have gotten all the way up to a 70. Wow. But a bunch of combat, a little bit of bravery. Nice. We're starting to get pretty stressed out. Late pollen. Um, no one's birthday. Yeah, we've read that. You catch Nem around the side of the garrison, leaning against the wall with her eyes closed. You call her name and she jerks awake, her hand to, going to her rifle. What? What? What's going on? Are they here? You need to get more sleep. You're starting to crack. Uh, no, we've read that one about your missing brother. Al's doing yoga. No, we need to add one more line of code. We've read that. Rex has his hickeys. We've read that. Mars. 
I don't see anything wrong with living a life of leisure, Mars muses. Sure, just because I'm not digging plants out of the dirt or shooting a gun doesn't mean I don't contribute. Mars gestures to the engineering structure. It takes years to see a tangible benefit from scientific research, and we still fund them, don't we? It's the same for ge uh, generating culture. You have to take it on faith that it will benefit you in the future. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is some point to what you're saying. You're not entirely wrong, but I do think Mars is contributing the least to the colony. Your dad takes a big breath, holds it, and lets it out again. Never thought I'd be able to breathe during pollen, he says with amazement. Incense is really a miracle worker. And you too, kiddo. Without you, who knows how I I'd survive. Don't you have something you should be doing right now, Selene? Alright. We also were wanting to do... Was it Ten the Animals? Animals and Empathy? Yeah. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Animals and empathy. You meet your dad by the animal pens, fresh and ready for your first day on your new job. Your dad laughs at your clean clothes and your scrub face. Oh, pumpkin. I'm sorry to tell you that you're a little overdressed for the position, he chuckles. You're going to get dirtier than all heck today. Go on, put on these overalls and let's get to work. You change and follow your dad to the float cow pens. He rubs their noses as he points out uh, as he points out their names. I know they're cute, but these l ladies aren't pets, he, he says. They're livestock. And more than that, they're not really domesticated like our animals back on Earth. They're more like tame. We give all the animals lots of room to roam, and we feed them well. They're not going to get chased down and eaten by bigger animals, and we help them if they're sick. It's a pretty good deal, I think, but they're still pretty wild, he says. You got to be careful with them. He leans his elbow, his elbows on the fence. We are pretty lucky that Rotumna has hurt animals, he says. Makes it a little easier. We'll probably have real domesticated animals in a couple hundred years. Well, kiddo, your dad says, spreading his arms. We've got all these animals. What do you want to learn about first? Bristle slugs, the float cows, the squeeger, the sugar bugs, the trippets. I don't think we should eat animal stuff. I guess we'll start with the bristle slugs. Oh yeah, we've got a ton of them, he says. They're great, slow and gentle and easy to catch, which you already know. Don't let the spikes fool you. They're actually really cuddly, and don't mind it when you pet them. It actually helps them. In the wild, they're, they'd be scratching up on all sorts of things to knock off those itchy berries. He scrunches up his nose. They're not really berries, they're more like eggs? Well, they're like berries, though, because they're sweet, and... You know what? Never mind. Retumnant animals are pretty weird. The flow cows. The flow cow you captured is still here. Look, there it is. He says, gesturing out at the herd. You squint and try and follow where he's pointing. Eventually, you see it. Wow, it's much bigger than when you last saw, when you saw it last. It's been eating well. And guess what? Your dad says with a grin. It was pregnant. See all those little floaties? Our first babies. You smile as you watch the float calves bob alongside their mother. We figured out that if we keep feeding them and what they'd, uh, if we keep feeding them what they'd be eating during pollen, they'll keep making milky around. He continues proudly. It makes them heavy enough that they don't float away. Otherwise, we'd have to keep on, keep them on leads like balloons. Squeezer. Oh yeah, Queen Bee. Your dad says excitedly. Well, she's more like an ant. Not that you know what an ant is either. Well, never mind. She settled in great, he continues. We've got her rooted now. And she's all ready to start having her own little squeegers. And then those guys are going to do most of the work caring for her. She's a little grumpy, but I'd be pretty cranky too if I had to stay in one place and lay eggs for the rest of my life. You'll be responsible for squeezing that royal jelly out of her. Glad to see you and not me. Careful of the acid mist. Sugar bugs. Your dad takes you to the row of crates where the soft, squishy sugar bugs are all clumped up together in the moist muck. These guys are pretty cool, he says, picking one up. It perfectly fits into his palm. They're a colony, just like us, and if you tickle them, you get... He brushes his finger along the top of the sugar bug, and a little jet of gooey stuff comes out. Sugar bug syrup, he says. Pretty neat, right? And the trippets. No joke, we thought these guys were just plants for the first couple of years, your dad says. We transplanted them from the wild into the greenhouses, but I guess that was just part of their life cycle, because it turns out they're sentient and can move around and stuff. We moved them out of the greenhouses into the barns, but we don't really treat them differently. They still mostly just sit there. Well, let's get started. Great, your dad says, clapping you on the back. That's the kind of energy I want to see around here. 
We need someone to muck out the float cow stables. They might float, but their poop sure doesn't. He hands you a shovel. Have fun. All right. I'll just toss in some big cards. Cards with the gems are wild and neat. Uh, we don't have any yellow, so I don't have to worry about that. No, that's going to turn into a three. Hmm. If I do leave that as a three, then... Oh, uh, you are also problematic. All right. There we go. I'm happy with that. Okay. Moving that to the other end is somehow slightly better. Sure. Plus six animals didn't quite max it. And a little bit of empathy. Nice. 